web and the internet? Mm -hmm. Sorry. But it's okay. So, that's so what how, how does one access the internet? Well, you need to do an application that runs on the web. But uh, another, another <coughs> you do run other internet applications. Like, for instance, uh, not everybody uses webmail. Some people still use uh, mail programs, like Thunderbird. Um, and this is actually a program that's connected to the internet, not the internet. Uh, there's commercial programs like Skype that you have on your computer oh, that are, that are the internet is just a network. It allows computers to talk to each other. And, and different technologies can be used on that network, right? So you use the internet to get to a website, but you're just accessing one host. And so you're creating a client-server relationship with that host, but the network between you is still peer to internet for now. I mean, the, the, how long you actually have access to the internet for directly is another open question. But for now, we still do. For now, you have absolutely no <coughs> time. It's just that the, the only technology that's receiving investment, so the only technology that's creating platforms that are usable for the masses is the web. And the reason it's getting that funding is because that's the only way that capitalism will fund it, because they need to capture profit by controlling user data and trash. There's not a great waste of profits. Yeah, sure. So how does that, how does that be related to what's going on now with the SOPA, with the bill, with the trial? Talk about SOPA. Well, it's all very much related. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a multi-faced attack. I mean, they not only want, it's not only a question of, like, starvation from capital, but it's also but it's also a legal attack, right? So they're trying to they're trying to make it very much impossible to use the internet except for as is authorized by agents of capital. And so so fun all these things are just part of the are just part of the legislative attack that the DMC the DMCA was and everything else. about social individuation, a 
and something uh, that had uh, differences but also affinities uh, with the physical processes such as the formation of salt crystals out of water. Now, you have a medium of interaction, you have energy, you have a certain saturation of energy. When a certain saturation of energy happens, you have structures formed. So it's a formation of structures out of loose interactions which involve lots of components, uh, which involves chemicals, uh, and in our case involves uh, sociality. So where are the structures going to be managed? I think the question you know, I left it open because it is open. We're not in a good moment. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, really depression going, going around. Because the, the power of the current decomposition seems so strong, right? But I want to leave that open the fact that the mechanism of transit situation of formation of new structures, not just event like uh, sudden appearances <coughs> and disappearances of protests, uh, by a kind of sedimentation of something, which might mean uh, you know, the new institution of the commons that we all were kind of wishing for, uh, to understand might happen in this context, because connectedness is the only form of kind of unity we have. So in that sense. When uh, like the second question of social cooperation and division of labor, when he says, uh, watch out, which Marxists have inherited from other Smith the model of the pin factory, as a model of production and value, he's saying uh, we still need to understand and form the categories uh, for what it means uh, to cooperate beyond the fact that I do this and do that and the other one does that. What does it mean to interact? No, yes, this, what does it mean to in social influence? How do people become hubs of networks? How do people influence other you know, get them to uh, follow, follow them, follow them? What, what is that dynamic? You know, I think it's a problem. I was a bit puzzled by both presentations. For two reasons. It reminds me of... Yes, I'm a puzzled by both presentations for two reasons. It reminds me of the fact that Capital wrote, I mean, Marx wrote Capital and he finished on the fundamental question of what is labor and he left it unfinished. And that it seems to me that your presentation, gentlemen, should have started from the end rather than go through all the introductory stuff on the background debates that a lot of us are aware of. The fundamental question is that what, the question is left unanswered at the end. And what worries me and the big contradiction here in the analysis is that although you start from the starting point that it's somehow what you call the legacy of the, um, the workers and autonomy movement, which says, which insists that the struggle predetermines um, the, 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 um, uh, the, the, the results, it's a struggle. The struggle is completely missing from your analysis, in the sense that uh, the, the struggles and the reactions are nowhere inscribed in the ways in which we can determine the future. Now, this leads, the nowhere inscribed in terms of how this transforms the potential that's already there. So, in the end, so therefore, you, leave, you come to this rather pessimistic question, which you leave open with questions, but no real uh, intervention. And I think that's a, that's a fundamental problem in the analysis of being focused so much on what is going on at the level of this machine that we are analyzing, but without referring it back to the, the sociality which is missing from the, from the analysis. The sociality which creates a potential that we cannot see and analyze the potential for communism afterwards unless we see by our struggle. And I think this is a fundamental problem that needs to be addressed. Yeah, you're probably right. As I said, uh, this was a synthesis of uh, the kind of analysis that is going on right now. So it reflects uh, the, the turn, the twist that the analysis is taking place right now. So forms of resistance, uh, forms of struggle taking place with the networks, we still haven't mapped this. You know, we, still, we still, I think, we, 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 and I say we as meaning a kind of community of researchers, you know, are working on similar issues. Uh, apart from uh, work that has been done on the Occupy movement, of course, which is in center stage, and on David and the use of social networks, but still, uh, you know, we, we can just point to some slogans, you know, that's what I did uh, in the end, you know, kind of 
social default, occupied living, the commons, uh, guaranteed income, uh, you know, new forms of welfare. But the way in which uh, these slogans uh, are actually uh, embodied in the actual practices of communication and sociality, they're still unmarked. But the fact they are not there, because the presentation was so much about political economy in that sense, doesn't mean that uh, you know, they are not or they shouldn't be um, really looked for and understood. But I think it's going to require also conceptual innovation, because it's always that. You know, when you get new forms of struggle, you don't see them. You know, resistance or new forms of constituent power, you don't see them for a long you know, Unless you kind of change your tools. So I have a problem with the fact that analysis was flawed. Because I think it's, uh, it's a difficult moment to uh, process uh, potential for resistance. It could be really easy, you could say, look at the Occupy everything, look at Tunisia, you know, you could look at Argentina, you could look at Iceland, you could look at all these kind of things, but it would be an easy way out. The, 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 um, the part of our presentation, uh, you said sort of asked the other question, how, um, uh, how far we can use social media so long as it is owned by capitalism. And, uh, and, my presentation didn't get that either, but the answer is exactly as much as, as we struggle for. I mean, the, the the amount that we use it for is not it's not an economic it's not an economic um, amount, but uh, amount of struggle. Just like, just like we were talking before, the social composition of resistance versus uh, composition of labor, and it's the same thing. I mean, the, the free market, like everything else, uh, drives labor as a commodity down down to zero. So if we were living in a free market. Uh, we would have no social capital or social capacity to engage in any struggle or to build any alternatives to anything or any kind of autonomous systems. The fact that we do, that calculus is based on struggle. So what keeps, what keeps our sort of social capital surplus or our social working capital above zero is exactly that, that struggle. And the degree to which we can expand that sort of social capital base to apply it in our conflict is how much we can push for it. I think that. I also am very interested in Maserato's division of creditors and debtors, as, as the channel also, also referred to. Um, and uh, what's kind of controversial from an autonomous background is, is that it called for the creation of a debtor's party, which seems kind of like uh, paradoxical in a sense. But I see it, I see it, uh, I see this part of this concept of counter politics. Not engaging, not engaging in, in party politics and the theater of the state with any idea of capturing the state and imposing communism from the top down, which is not, which is not a system that's, uh, that many of us think is workable anymore, but engaging in that system as a theater of resistance in order, in order, in order